20 signs of covert narcissism. This isn't the only 20 signs. There's a lot of signs of covert narcissism. These are just 20 things that you might see in a covert narcissist. So number one, we know what number one is when it comes to covert narcissism. It's the lack of empathy. So obviously all narcissists lack empathy. So, but it can look a little different with a covert narcissist. It can look like empathy. It can look like they care about things, people, um, situations. Look, It can look like they are um, compassionate, but really when it comes down to it, it's all self-referential. It's all self, um, it's their turning it back towards self. So the things that, that what looks like they have empathy for are things that they've experienced themselves or that they can directly relate to often, or they've learned the words to say to make it sound like they have empathy. And number two, uh, it's a passive self-importance. It's backhanded compliments and obvious minimizing of accomplishments so that they will get what? They're fishing for compliments, right? It's a passive, like there's the self-importance is there, but it's, it's passive. It's like hidden and disguised. Three, blame and shame. They usually use a lot of word salad and gaslighting to shift the blame onto other people and make themselves the victim. Let's talk about what is a covert narcissist. It's a more subtle and less obvious behaviors of narcissism, right? So it's not, it's not going to look, if you, if you see the word, if you see the, the, um, diagnostic criteria of delusions of grandeur, it's often hard to see in a covert narcissist because they are continually being passive with their self-importance. They're not out there bragging. They brag covertly. Everything is hidden and masked. It's like they wear triple masks, right? They're masked and then they're masked again and then they're masked again to cover, cover, cover what the, the overt behaviors of narcissism. Number four is disregard. They disregard pretty much anyone who's no longer um, happy, new, exciting supply. They disregard your feelings, your likes, your, they just disregard, they have this general sense of disregard for anyone, for everyone, really, unless it's something that they're really interested in in that moment. Number five, emotional neglect. They know exactly what you need because you've told them, because this is what we do in relationships with people. We tell them what we need and they refuse to give it, right? I mean, I think that's all narcissists, but the way an over, a way a covert will do that will look like they're actually giving it. For instance, um, spending a lot of time with you might be something you said you need. I, I, I need you to spend more time with me. What do we mean when we say that? What we mean is we want quality, happy, you know, pleasant time with someone, right? Just the clock ticking isn't spending time with someone. That's just the clock ticking away while you're in the same place. Spending time with someone means you're actually with them. So a covert narcissist may spend their entire day at your house and they may do things like three hours in the bathroom. Ask me how I know. Or, um spend their entire time playing video games and ignoring you and spend the entire time. And then when you say, Hey, you know, it would be nice to spend time together. You could even say it sweetly. You can even say, you know what, it'd be really fun to go out together and do something together and like spend some time together. And as soon as you say that it, they will neglect, they will neglect that emotional need that you're stating and counter it with, I just spent the entire day with you. Is that not enough? How are you disregarding everything that I do for you? They project it all over you. They flip the flip the blame with projection and throw it at you like you just said the worst thing in the world. And in all of it, your emotional need your emotional needs become neglected. I think the number one feeling of being with a covert narcissist, especially one that is not a name caller or overtly abusive in any way at all, like there would be no way to 
describe the abuse for some people. They, they only get the validation when they hear us talking about it. Other people who've been there because there's no way to describe it to anyone sometimes. But this, this number five, this emotional neglect is a big one because I think most people who have been through it, that's one of the number one things they felt. I felt emotionally invisible. I felt neglected. I felt like every time I, I stated a need, it would be negated. It would be refuted. It would The blame would be flipped onto me and I would feel guilt and shame for even having that need. So they have a smug, a quiet smugness. Their smugness is not the same as an overt where they're uh, gloating and, you know, boasting and, you know, smug and stuck up and completely arrogant of other people. A covert will do it in ways like subtle jabs, putting people down behind their back, putting always complaining about situations in a really subtle negative undertone, um, their body language. The rolling of the eyes, the the looking away, the disregard, that's the, the quiet smugness that they have. So there's that. Number seven, self-absorption. Well, of course, <laughs> right? But really, the self-absorption is like a withdrawn self-centeredness. It's not, oh, it's again, it's not the boastful overt. It's this withdrawn self-centeredness. I have to go into my this, it's about me, you know, the whole, um, they don't listen because of this self-centered, this self, self-absorption, they don't listen. They may listen to you during the love bombing period really intently because they are, they, narcissistic people are trying to understand as much as they can really quickly to get all the information they need to groom you, right? I mean, maybe they don't know they're doing that, but that's what's, that's the mechanism. That's what's happening. And they are looking for clues as to how to, um, with the grooming, you know, they're looking for clues as to how to lure you in, how to how to create connection. That's what how they might word it if they're if they're you know have any level of um, reading of any kind of uh, modern psychology, right? They they might say, "I'm trying to connect, I'm trying to connect," but really, what they're doing is reading to um, to groom. So. Self-absorption, the not listening. When they're not listening, they are, um, well, they're shutting you down, right? And they're going, turning toward everything about, has to be about them. Number eight, passive aggressive, the brush off, the subtle digs. The, um, they tend to be, again, they're not often, sometimes they are verbally abusive as well. And, and, more covert traits tend to be overlooked. And it, it can be really confusing when you're with them because when you're with a, co a more covert narcissist, most of these things that I'm saying here and other things are so hidden and so um, almost subtle that again, it's really hard to even describe what's happening. It's more just how you feel. You feel crazy. You feel like you're with someone. You feel abused and you don't know why sometimes. They tend to be highly sensitive. Number nine, highly sensitive, highly sensitive to any form of negative feedback. Let's call it negative. I don't even consider some of the things negative. Any kind of feedback that doesn't serve the egotistical mask, that doesn't serve the mask they're trying to present that they want you to believe they are. Anything that goes against that, anything that knocks them off their pedestal they've placed themselves up on and there's seat of self-importance, anything that is questioning of them, anything that requires accountability, the sensitivity is so high that you say three words and that's it. The gaslighting starts, the blame shifting starts, the victim stance starts. It all spins around into completely confusing chaos you're walking on eggshells because you don't know what you can and can't say. Because everything you say is going to be a trigger at that point for the trigger at that point for them. Oftentimes they'll say, I'm triggered by that a lot, especially if they've learned, if they have gone to therapy with a partner, if they have uh, done any sort of training for, um, um, like I know, minded nonviolent communication training with his ex. And all that did is teach him language. And what it, what other people feel, so that he could then respond to it correctly, with the right words, 
but it didn't actually, I mean, it's not going to implant empathy, right? It can't. So yeah. All right. So highly sensitive to any form. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about, how you can say the slightest thing and it's not even said in a negative tone. It could just be said in a, Hey, you know, whatever kind of tone. And it, it turns into a giant, giant thing. Something that can be resolved in three words turns into one hour and 10 minutes of her feelings, her perspectives and her hurts, right? Instead of something that could simply be resolved with a, wow, is that how you feel when that happens? Which is always our wanting because what we're really wanting is back to our number five, our emotions to not be neglected. All right, so um, number 10, false humility and victim stance. We talked a little bit about how that plays out with some of the other things, but that false humbleness and being the victim. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot with covert narcissism. And their feelings get hurt a second that they are questioned, right? It's really, oh my gosh, if, 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 I, if you question me and say, Lisa, why did you do that? And I say, oh my gosh, you hurt my feelings. Why do you talk to me like that? Then of course it's no longer about the thing I did. It's now about how I'm feeling, right? It's effective. It's toxic and it's effective. All right, number 11, immature responses. Need I say more, <laughs> right? This is where we get the easily offended, no accountability, the gaslighting, the projecting. They're all just immature responses to, they're immature um, uh, reactions really to situations that question and make them accountable. Question them and make them accountable, yeah. So number 12, minimizing others' needs or pain similar to emotional neglect, but literally minimizing the needs of other people. And I'm not even talking about their, their primary source of supply, anyone. Um, if Because of the lack of empathy, how can they have any understanding of someone else's needs or pain? Number 13, when you're in a relationship with one, this goes, this is true of any narcissist, but lopsided attention in the relationship. The needs for attention is lopsided. It's all about them. And then they give you crumbs. It's very uh, like any narcissistic relationship, it's transactional. So you will be rewarded. It's punishment reward based often, you know, you will be rewarded for your, your, your good supply by receiving some crumbs of affection, or some acknowledgement of something that you feel or you some need met. And then we go back to the, where they, well, I did that. How could you possibly say I was, you know, you've ruined the whole day by pointing out this thing because, yeah. So we go back to that. Number 14, controlling in ways that look like they are being supportive. So just there's underhanded controlling that goes on is what I'm trying to say. There's an underhanded uh, controlling aspect they I mean they have to control everything. That's narcissists for you. But it, something about the more covert ones, I feel like there's there's this. I think because it's covert, it's confusing the way they control and how many ways that they seek and gain control of people. Number fifteen, silent rage with a good old silent treatment. Covert narcissists are good at it. They love it. It's a, it's a favorite go-to for a lot of them. Number 16, any narcissist, this is true of gaslighting. What does gaslighting look like, you guys, from a covert narcissist? I think there's a lot of blame shifting. Like I said, I think there is a lot of um, twisting of your words, a lot of word salad, a lot of, I mean, they all do this, but there's this a way that it's done very covertly where you feel instantly like you are the one. I mean, the gaslighting is quick and swift. It comes out of nowhere because half, so it's like they're a rational person part of the time and they don't, they don't show any overt, you know, traits most of the time. And then all of a sudden they flip into this thing that is not able to communicate with you and is 
twisting your words and you can no longer trust them. So there's the trust built and then the trust destroyed constantly in this loop. So number 17, highly wrapped up in their own interests. Anyone could be that, sure. Anyone could be super wrapped up and I'm wrapped up in my interests, whatever, but I don't devalue other people's. And I don't devalue people within that have the same interests that aren't as good or that people, and I don't, you know, like they devalue, they devalue if you try and join that interest, they'll get competitive with it. Oh, the competition. Did any of you have one that's super competitive that when you try to do anything with them, it was always a competition? I feel like that's also, oh, there was one point here. I kind of missed, I, I went over it too fast. The controlling of others. Okay, so they, they can do things like say someone has knowledge of something and they, I don't actually know which category this comes in, but this came to me. So say someone has knowledge of something and they're saying, but it's like their knowledge. It's not fact provable. It's nothing. It's just, they're just talking. They're like, Hey, Oh, you know this. And they talk about a thing The the some of some covert narcissists can, or I guess overts can do it too, but there's a certain way a covert will do it where they'll, take interest in the topic that's being talked about and then try and disprove the person while they're talking about it. So they'll be putting the person down by disproving them and usually in front of other people in order to, it's sort of like posturing to gain power of the situation and have control of who's, you know, the, the bigger dog in the, yeah. So the extreme need for praise. All narcissists have an extreme need for praise. The, the covert person will not necessarily, you know, come on, give me the praise like that. It's it's a given that you should give them praise. And when you don't, their feelings get hurt and they start to devalue you and devalue you and devalue you until you're forced to give the praise through begging for them to forgive you. Does that make sense? Eek. Yeah, I can remember an argument about a color. I think we talked about that the other day in here, an argument about a color. Like why, why couldn't I just be right about the color that it was? Why? I mean, I'm pretty good with colors. I can tell what color something is. It was ochre. Sorry, it really was. And no, it was mustard according to them. And then we had to have a whole Google debate over the color. Wasting, when, when the whole, what it did was took away from the story I was trying to tell about something that was the only reason I threw the color in there was to give imagery and like talk about it. it doesn't matter if I said that color or yellow, it doesn't matter, right? It was a specific shade of like, you know, I mean, I had it in my head and I was like, is it ochre? Is it like a amber? I don't know, it's sort of similar to those two colors and I, those two colors aren't the same. I think it was mustard. And so basically took my entire story I was trying to derailed me and I conversation lost, right? Eh, it's a smoke screen. That's right. Okay. For 19, they're envious of other people. Uh-huh. And oh, this is where I said they need to prove other people wrong because they're envious of other people's knowledge. They're envious of other people getting attention. They're envious of of any positivity that go, goes towards someone else and it isn't going towards them. They're envious of, of people's having birthdays, of people having fun, of everything. They're just envious. Number 20, last one for today. There's a lot more, but these are the 20 that I came up with today. <laughs> Number 20, um, they help others for recognition. This is a special kind of covert narcissist. I tend to call them the, the altruistic, vulnerable covert narcissist. They are altruistic in that they help others. They may have jobs where they help others. They may even save lives. They may be part of a religious community where they're actually doing good for the community. Okay. They're not, they may have, they may be environmental, active environmentally or, or active in the community and actually be doing things toward, you know, helping that community. And they, they do it for the recognition. Is that a bad trait? I mean, if it gets good stuff done, it's a good use of a, of a selfish mind, right? However, it does flip into um, 
it's just a way to see that somebody doing somebody with a whole lot of traits that is super stealthy with their narcissism that but has a lot of these traits and others and is gaslighting and is toxic in a relationship if they're also helping others for recognition the problem the reason to see this the only reason this matters is that it looks like empathy and so it can confuse you when you're a survivor and you're with someone and they're out there saving lives and they're out there like you know planting trees or whatever they're doing and you think they have a ton of empathy it's just me it's me that they don't have that they don't like it's me that I'm the problem because look they're out there helping people well, when you really break it down, they're out there for recognition. They're out there to prove to themselves in the world that they are this thing that they're pretending to be while they're doing that thing, which is helping. They're not doing it for some genuine need to help people from some genuine place of care for other people or, or other situations. They're truly out there to be the hero. All right. So, and and like I said, sure, it can be a positive use of their selfishness because it might get some good stuff done. But if you recognize it for what it is and you see it's not empathy that's driving it, it's not empathy that's even involved in this process, then at least you're not thinking it's only me that they're this way with. So it must be me. That's the problem. And I'm not seeing. So yeah, you got to see the big picture with, and see it for what it is. If you've not done so hit subscribe and um, that's it. If you need help with anything, head over to queenbeing.com. And if you need coaching or um, group coaching information, check out the main comments of every video. There's a link to those things. Mm -hmm.